As one descends the spiral staircase leading down to the Aqua Virgo, more than 2,000 years old, it becomes clear why many people in today's largest cities may well envy the Romans their water supply. The most famous buildings of Imperial Rome are the Pantheon and Colosseum, but the city owes its existence not to religious architecture or policies of bread and circus, but to what lies beneath it. Aqueducts transported water from the heights outside the city to its very centre. It's not difficult to understand Sextus Julius Frontinus, the man responsible for providing ancient Rome with water, when 1900 years ago he complained about the fame of the beautiful but useless pyramids and Greek temples, whereas the impressive and utilitarian water structures of Rome received no praise. Drinking fountains were a feature of the townscape in the days of the emperors too. Then, as now, the water flowed day and night. There was no way of turning it off. The fountains had a practical purpose too. They helped to flush away dirt and sewage. There was so much water in ancient Rome, and it filled so many public baths, that it was sometimes said, in jest, that the city could be conquered because its soldiers were reclining in their baths. <laughs> <laughs> 